Hi there, my name is Ephraim Ojima and this is Solution Providers. Now, I'm not a solution provider, but God is. He will be bringing a solution concerning any of the situation through his word that he teaches that he will be having me do on this channel. His word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, that God is able to make all grace abound unto you, that you having all sufficiency in all things will abound unto every good work. Yes, having all sufficiency in all things. So the catch, the only catch that is there is this. Yes, the Bible says God is able, not that God will. So until you are able to apply the principle of the word of God in your life, his ability cannot be made available to you. So I beg you, stay tuned to this channel and go through the teachings by the grace of God so that you'll be able to apply the principles in your life and his ability of sufficiency will be made available to you for all of your situations in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to subscribe to this channel if you have not because it promises to be a great time. And also, click on the notification bell so that you'll be one of the first that will be receiving these messages and the teachings by the grace of God. And like the message if you like the message actually. So, stay tuned and God bless you. Hi there, I welcome you to another wonderful episode and today we'll be discussing something very, very vital uh, for our existing and that is what does it mean to worship God in spirit and in truth? Worshiping God is very, very vital. In fact, that's what we were created for, to worship God. But uh, for some reason, a lot of us, including myself, a long time ago, have misunderstood what our Lord Jesus Christ said. So, because we have been created to worship God, we think it is just going to church to sing fast and slow songs, songs that express our heart desires to God. In fact, unfortunately, most of the songs that even we even sing today are not uh, songs that actually worship God, but they are just slow songs that express uh, our heart desires, our requests, um, how we feel and stuff like that. We are not actually worshiping God. But today, we want to understand what our Lord Jesus Christ was really saying that God is a spirit and they that worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. So we want to find out how can we who are physical, because the truth of the matter is, is everything we do is physical. So how can we who do all these physical things, the things that we say, we say from our physical mouth, so they are physical. They, they, our thoughts are locked in our brain. They are all generated from our physical body. So our thoughts, our words, they are all physical. Just because we cannot see them does not make them spiritual. It's just like if somebody is locked up in a room somewhere, the fact that you cannot see the person does not mean that the person is spiritual or the air that will breathe in because we cannot see them does not mean that the air is spiritual the microorganisms uh, all these things just because our physical eyes cannot see them does not mean they are spiritual they are physical and they exist so how can we physical people actually worship god in spirit and in truth now Remember I was saying that it is not the songs that we sing in church that uh, is a worship to God. In fact, let's look at um, uh, a group of people that tried doing that and see what God did. In, in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 from verse 13, the Bible says that when the people were as one to worship God, they to, to thank Him, to praise Him, to worship Him for He is good. The Bible said that as the people became one in doing that, God descended in his glory in a thick cloud and the people, the ministers could not stand to worship God again. They could not remain in the temple because the, the, the glory of the Lord filled the whole place. What does that mean? That God actually or literally chased them out of the temple. Because if somebody is giving you what you desire, you will not chase the person away. It is not like we that are eating food and our stomach has boundaries and limitations and it cannot eat more than it can take in. So when the food is, we are satisfied, we tell the person it's enough, we like the food, but we cannot take it again. No, God is unlimited, He is boundless, He is forever receiving glory. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. 
that the angels, the, the, the elders, they worship God continuously, saying that you are worthy of glory, honor, and power. This is what God receives constantly. So how will a group of people sing worship or praise to God and God will be oversatisfied and he will stop them? No, it's just because God was not accepting that worship. That worship was not what God wanted from the people. And so when they started that worship, God stepped in and chased them away. Another group of people that wanted to do something to please God was uh, the children of God after Noah. In Genesis chapter 11, the Bible says that they called themselves together, let us build a tower that will reach unto heaven. Why will it reach unto heaven? They wanted to connect back to God. They said, lest we be scattered. But God himself said the people are as one. Let us scatter them. And that which they felt they should not be done, that which should not be done to them, which is being scattered, was what God actually did to them. Because that was not the will of God. So God scattered those that were worshipping him in that Solomon's temple. Even in Acts of Apostles, when the people were as one, they started confining themselves, gathering together. They were limiting themselves to a space. They were breaking bread from house to house, but were gathering in the temple in Solomon's pouch. And that was where they felt they were worshipping and relating with God. And the Bible said, and God, well, true Saul, Saul at that time that became Paul, scattered them. And those that were scattered started preaching around. So God is not designing us to be limiting ourselves in churches to worship him. I know you will ask the question that why have God not scattered them? But the question is this, are they one? A lot of churches, the members, the brethren within, are, are we one? The kind of politics, wickedness, things that have been done in churches today, even unbelievers will marvel. I heard of a story of people that we, we go and meet pastors that, that we um, tell the they're, they're people that have charms and stuff like that. They want to steal people's glory. So they will tell uh, men of God, they will bribe them that when you start a program, invite other men of God to come outside. When you tell people that need prayers, the people that need prayers will come outside and you now invite other ministers of God that will come. These voodoo juju people will now join the, the minister that will come and begin to lay hands on these people and they will be drawing the glory that God has placed in these people. So these are things that are happening in churches that we say is the house of God. So our Lord Jesus Christ is re-emphasizing that God is the Spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So the question is this, how do we worship God in spirit when we are in the physical body? Now let us quickly look at how God created us. This will help us by the grace of God. Now, we are spirit beings in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. It makes it clear that he created a physical body and put the spirits inside them. So, we are spiritual beings, actual spiritual beings, but locked up in the physical body. For those that have watched Voltron or Matrix, you will, it, it will be easy for you to understand. It's just like being inside a robot, a big robot. You are inside a robot controlling the robot. The robot is actually doing the things outside, but you are the one controlling it. So our, we are the spirit beings. We are the real, our spirit is the real person, but on this earth, God has programmed us that we cannot, our spirit cannot do anything on its own except through the physical body. So when we talk, what is coming out is the physical sound, but it is generated by our spirit. Now, when you, that is why no matter what you do, no matter what this physical body does, when we go and stand before God, this physical body will not come there. The physical body will die. The moment the physical body dies, the spirit is released. The spiritual person cannot operate on this physical plane without this physical body. The spiritual cannot operate without the physical. But the spiritual controls the physical. So that when the we come before God, the spiritual person answers before God because God is the spirit. So they that come before God must be spiritual. So when we stand before God spiritual, we answer for what the physical body did. We will not give an excuse that, it, oh, it wasn't me, it was my physical body. No, it's not possible. It's not possible. 
It is the spiritual person that does the physical things through the physical body. So how then can we worship God in spirit and in truth? That means everything we do actually is spiritual but physical. So how can it be actually spiritually spiritual though physical? Because what God is looking for is those that worship Him in spirit and in truth. But yet, whatever we do is coming out physical. Remember we're saying, we, 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 we just said that it is not when we confine ourselves in a place. If we ever confine ourselves in a place and we get to a point where we are one, God will step in. If we are not going out, God will step in and scatter us. Why is God scattering us? Let us look at John chapter 9 verse 31. This place we will see that God worshippers are not people that are limited to just one period or one place to worship God. The Bible says that the worshippers are those that do it the will of God. Do it the will of God. That is the answer. Romans chapter 8 says that the carnal man cannot please God. A worshiper who is a worshiper now let us look at Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says that the spiritual things are clearly understood by physical things so let us use use physical things to try and understand what God is trying to say the spiritual things now a worshiper is somebody that does not is not just coming to bow once in a while like we do once <laughs> every Sunday no a worshiper that is his lifestyle like what John chapter 9 verse 31 says that do it the will of God, constantly doing the will of God. The bow worshippers in the Bible, that was their lifestyle. In today we have voodoo worshippers. When you see voodoo worshippers, all they do is related to their voodoo. The way they eat, the way they talk, the way they sleep, the way they enter a room, the things they do is all dedicated to their voodoo. Juju, the Juju worshippers in Nigeria, the Shongo worshippers, the Ifa worshippers, the, the Hindu worshippers, all of those worshippers, all they do is geared towards the being that they worship. Even people that worship their fellow human beings, everything, everything they do is geared towards that person. Now, they do it both the voodoo worshippers, the juju worshippers, all of them do it to get something from their deity, power, wealth, whatever. That's why they do all their worship. But even when they are enjoying that world, they enjoy it based on the principles of their voodoo or their juju. They do not do it just anyhow. When they do it anyhow, the voodoo will strike them. You have violated the principle. So, it is important to operate in the line of the instruction of whoever you are worshipping. Thank you so much for taking your time to listen to this message. I believe you should be able to listen to it over and over for it to make absolute meaning to your life. Now, until you are able to apply it in your life, it will not do you good. For the Bible says that it is not a hearer that is blessed, but the doer. So please take out your time to apply these principles in your life. And the solution that you're seeking will come to you in Jesus' name. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you'll be among the first people to receive it when the notice of our message comes in Jesus' name. And like the message also because I believe you will like what you have read. Finally, I will beg you, please make a comment. Whatever is in your heart, drop it. And if you have any question whatsoever, please drop it on the comment box. Any other comment you want to make, please make a comment. Let us be interacting together so that we'll be able to help each other because the Bible says that iron sharpened iron and will be better for it in the mighty name of Jesus. So once again, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode on this channel. So stay blessed for God loves you.